In this tutorial, we'll take a look at some applications of the dot product and cross product. And the first uh, example is in these uh, images here. We have, uh, we're going to talk about torque. So the, uh, this is the torque formula to calculate the torque vector. And uh, this vector here would be the R vector, which represents the length of the wrench or whichever is being uh, uh, rotated. Uh, so the length, of course, that would be the length of the R vector. And so this is the direction of the force, force vector here at some angle. So this is the angle theta is the angle between those two vectors. And the, this is the force vector, so its length would be the magnitude of F. So the magnitude of the torque is the magnitude of R times the magnitude of F times the sine of angle theta. In the uh, image of the bicycle over here, the uh, R vector would be the length of the crank. And then there's some force applied at some particular angle. Not necessarily 90 degrees. I mean, 90 degrees gives you the optimum torque, uh, but it, you can't always apply the force vector at a right angle or a 90 degree angle to the uh, the R vector. So that would be the length of that would be the length of the force vector, and this would be the, the length of the crank would be the length of the R vector. In the uh, example number one on the dot bottom half of the page, a 22 pound force is applied to a 15 inch wrench at an angle of 75 degrees. So it's applied. And I'm going to say it's applied in this direction. That's relative for question B here. What's the direction of the torque vector? We'll talk about that in a moment. So here's the 22 pound force being applied here and uh, at an angle of 75 degrees. And uh, the length of the wrench is 15 inches. Now, uh, torque is often, um, the units are foot pounds. So I'm saying that the wrench is a 15 inch wrench. So I'm going to convert that to, pound, to pounds. I'm going to convert that to feet uh, divided by 12 because there's uh, 12 inches in a foot. So 1.25 uh, feet will, will be the length of my R vector. So here's uh, the formula from above to calculate the magnitude of the torque. So R is 1.25 feet. The force is 22 pounds. And it's an angle of 75 degrees, so times the sine of 75. So maybe we'll bring the calculator back here. So 1.25 times 22 times the sine of 75 degrees. Okay, and we get 26.6 for an answer here. So I'm going to round it to 27, and it would be foot-pounds. That would be the uh, uh, units for the torque. Uh, if you were to apply the uh, force in newtons and the length of the wrench was in meters, then it would be newton meters instead. Now, the direction of the torque vector, uh, you have to apply the right hand rule. And if you take your right hand and uh, place it on this wrench here so that your fingers curl in the direction that this red arrow is pointing, then your thumb would have to point into the page, uh, which means for, well, most thread. Uh, on, a, on, a, on a bolt, you'd be actually tightening, unless it happens to be backwards thread, you'd be loosening, I guess. Uh, if you actually were to apply the, uh, the torque in this direction, then your right hand, if it's curling uh, in the direction of the uh, up instead of down like this is, then your thumb would have to point out of the page if, it, if you reversed it. So that's the right hand rule. That's how you figure out the direction of the torque vector. Uh, in example number two, uh, we're asked to find the projection and its magnitude of the vector r on the vector w. So this is the projection formula here. So in the uh, numerator here, we need to calculate r dot w, the dot product of r and w. So negative 3 times 2 would be negative 6, uh, plus 6 times negative 3, so minus 18, and 1 times 4 is 4. So that's negative 24 plus 4 would be negative 20. Uh, we also need to calculate the length of the uh, w vector we're projecting onto. So uh, we're going to square 2, negative 3, and 4 under the root here and add them. So uh, 2 squared is 4, negative 3 squared is 9, and 4 squared is 16. Uh, so uh, 16 and 4 would be 20, plus 9 would be 29. So the length of the uh, w vector would be the root of 29. So let's calculate the uh, projection vector, and then we'll get into its magnitude at the end. So r dot w we found was the uh, negative 20. The length of w is root 29, so we're squaring the root of 29 here, and times the w vector, this w vector here. So uh, root 29 squared is 29. 
Remember those uh, roots just cancel one root and the square cancel one another out, and I can demonstrate that in my calculator here. 29 close bracket square gives me exactly 29. So we're multiplying uh, negative 20 29ths by each of these uh, components. Negative 20 times 2 is negative 40, so it's negative 40 29ths for the x component. Negative 20 times negative 3 is 60, so 60 29ths for the y component. And negative 20 times 4 would be negative 80. Uh, and of course, 29 times the denominator 1 is 29. So negative 80 29ths for the z component. So that's the projection vector. So the, uh, the formula for the, the length of it it's and we're, we're talking about the length so it noticed that 20 29 is actually the absolute value of the fraction in front here uh, times the length of the vector um, I could use the normal length of a vector formula if I wanted to I could take the root of this squared plus this squared plus this squared and uh, and that will give me the same thing but uh, it's really uh, we just have to take this fraction times the root of that the length of that vector which we know is the root of 29 now, if you multiply these together, uh, now of course the root 29 it has the denominator of 1 underneath it. 20 times root 29 is 20 root 29, and 29 times the denominator of 1 would be 29. Uh, I can simplify this a little, and, a, a little bit, and, and it, it depends a bit on uh, what you want to, uh, how you want to write this, but if I wanted to, uh, I could, if I multiply this by root 29, top and bottom, 29. See, this is 29. So that would actually divide out with this, and then for a final answer, in exact form, it's just 20 over root 29. So it depends a bit on the uh, uh, the, the form you want to leave it. Um, 20 root 29 over 29 is the same as 20 over root 29. Uh, which is, uh, if I take my calculator, of course, if I want to change it to a decimal, 20 divided by the square root of 29 is about 3.7 units. So that's how long it would be. Uh, one more example on the third page here. The uh, Another application of the dot product and cross product. The volume of, and this is a, like a kind of like a three-dimensional, uh, um, well, it is a three-dimensional object. It's called a parapolyped. Um, each face is a parallelogram. Uh, so it's a three-dimensional object. So it's not as simple as having like a box or a prism because uh, those vectors might be at not non-right angles. So the uh, the volume of the uh, parapolyped uh, with sides uh, vectors a, b, and c is uh, the uh, absolute value of the dot product of one vector with a cross product of the other two. So I don't have to go a dot b cross c. I could go uh, b dot a cross c if I wanted to, but you take two of them and find the cross product and the dot product with the third one. So in uh, example three, we've got uh, three vectors here. We're going to find the uh, volume of this parapolyped uh, with uh, these vectors as its sides. So uh, I'm going to use the same formula here. I'm going to do the cross product of b and c. So for B, remember, uh, and this is how I do my cross product, uh, I write Y component, Z component, X component, Y component, so 1, 5, negative 3, 1, and that's what's here. Taking the cross product of it with C, so negative 2, negative 1 at the beginning, and then we double back to the beginning, 0, negative 2, and write it. And there's my little arrows. And we'll let that finish coming in before I explain. There we go. So we go 1 times negative 1. That's that right there. Minus negative 2 times 5. Now, minus negative 2 is the same as plus 2 times the 5. And then, so that's going to be the x component. Uh, 5 times 0, which is right here, minus negative 1 times negative 3. So minus negative 1 times negative 3. I didn't bother to change the sign like I did here because there's more negatives, so I thought it would be a little bit simple, better that way. Uh, and then the z component, negative 3 times negative 2, minus 0 times the 1 in the end. So, uh, this would be negative 2, sorry, negative 2, this would be negative 1, uh, plus 10 would be 9, uh, 0, and then, now this is actually positive 3, so 0 minus 3 would be negative 3, and 6 minus 0 would be 6 for the z component. And so now, uh, 
we need to, uh, that's our B cross C vector, so that's this here. Now we need to take the dot product of the third vector, the A vector, with that cross product. So here's my A vector, the 2, 0, 1 vector, and the B cross C, uh, the 9, negative 3, 6. And so, and notice I have absolute value symbols here because I just want the uh, positive value of this. I don't want the negative because it's the volume. Volume, of course, can't be negative. And so we would go 2 times 9 is 18, plus 0 times negative 3 is 0, plus 1 times 6 is 6. 18 and 6 add to 24. So the volume would be 24 cubic units, whatever those units might be. And that's the end of the tutorial.